This is my Deformation 130 quadcopter. I built this with the intent of trying to race it against some of the bigger quads, the 250s and the 210s. Now, it won't really be fair, but I want to put myself at a disadvantage and see if I can win, hopefully based on skill, not on hardware. I, I don't know how possible it is, but, I, but I'm planning on doing it. So the intent of this build was to build something fun, something small, and something to race with. Now, these motors I have on here, just as a, as a little preview, they don't support running 4S very well. In fact, I've recommended against running 4S on them. But in the cool weather, they have been performing great. They come down and they're not even hot. It's probably because they got all the cool air blowing past them and I'll probably feel bad about doing that this summer when they burn up. But for now, it's awesome. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take a little bit closer look at this quadcopter to see how I put it together and hopefully um, help you build one that will be similar to this and you can change some of the things based on your intention of building it. So let's go ahead and get started on this. When you build a quad for racing, one important thing is the angle of the camera. Now if you're just gonna take this out and fly it around your neighborhood and you're not really set on going fast, Pointing the camera straight is fine, and the, the bad thing about pointing straight, or not really the bad thing, just really the thing about pointing it straight is as you lean forward, you begin to see less and less of the horizon, and that makes you only be able to, to lean forward so fast, and, and uh, it helps you control your speed. So if you want to go a little faster, you angle your camera up kind of like this, then as the quad can copter angles, see this, this quadcopter at this point can still see where it's going and I can still see the direction. And you have to get a pretty good steep angle before you start losing you know, the, the direction you're going. And here we're at better than 45 and I can still, and the camera can still see where it's pointing to. Like I said, if you want to build it to be a little bit slower, point the camera straight and you will definitely fly slower than if you angle it up. The problem with an angled up camera is it makes it a little bit harder to land it because as you come in for a landing like this, you can't see the ground. And so what uh, I've seen a lot of people do is they just get it close, what they think is close to the ground, just cut the throttle, just let it fall into the grass. You know, and, and a one foot fall with these doesn't hurt anything into grass, it does on concrete, but not into grass. When you're building a quad this small, you're trying to balance between weight and power. And uh, it, the way you do that is basically by looking at the size of your propellers. If you have three inch propellers, 1306 motors like these Eoshin 1306 uh, 3100 kV motors, they can spin these three, uh, three inch propellers just fine. An 1806 motor, it can spin these just fine too. I wouldn't even say that the 1806 could spin it better. I think they can both spin them about the same because they're so small and there's not a lot of mass to them to spin around. If you step up to something like a uh, four inch propeller, I think the 1306s might show a little bit less performance and the 1806s might be a little better. If you step up to a five inch propeller, the 1806s are gonna stomp all over these 1306 motors just because a five inch propeller like this one is just a lot of weight for this uh, little 1306 motor to be spinning around. And there you can get a little quick comparison. But three inch propellers, the uh, 1306 motors can handle them just fine and they weigh less. So that's kind of why I went with the 1306 motors on here. On here I'm also using the um, SN 20 amp uh, ESCs. I believe these are DYS mo uh, ESCs. And for wiring this, the wires actually come off of the off of the motor and they come up here and they circle around and come back here and then solder on to the ESC from this direction, <laughs> from this direction. That way I don't have, to have these little tiny little stubby wires off my coming off my motors because if the motors ever get reused somewhere else, it sure would be nice to have some wire left to solder solder with. So the ES, the wires, wires come up here and they turn around and they come back and I unsoldered the original wires off the ESCs and soldered the motor wires directly to the ESCs. It's a little bit risky, but if you're careful with your solder and not to, over, not to let the solders touch each other, it should be fine. All the ESCs are wired into a power distribution board setting, sitting right down here. And this is just a little diatone power distribution board. I like it because it's thin. You can even see here, even in comparison to the CC3D, how much thinner it is. And being thin, it's gonna, way less and weight is really the key on these small quadcopters. 
The CC3D ended up getting installed with the USB port back here on the back. That's not really ideal, but I cut the wires for um, the ESCs, the little short, so it ended up having to go that way. One thing you really want to watch out for is when you're hooking up your power cord, you want your power cord connected into your power distribution board like I have inside there. That it's kind of dark, you can't see it. But then I got it zip tied down back here. That way if the battery comes off and it pulls on this wire real hard, it's pulling on that zip tie instead of the solder pads because those solder pads will rip off that board and then you're going to be doing a whole new solder job. Now, the, um, this wire though, you don't want it to get caught in your propellers, as I showed in a previous teaser video, because it will chop up this wire like nobody's business, and you can see a couple little uh, pieces here where I had to solder on some new wire. So what I did here is I just put a zip tie up here, and it goes through the little hole up here on top on the top plate, just to hold the wires up out of the, out of the way of the props so they don't get in there. And then this is kind of left kind of long so that it can reach around and connect to the battery when it's mounted up here on top. Now inside here I have, like I showed before, I have the power distribution board. I got a CC3D in here. I got a uh, 200 milliwatt video uh, transmitter here. And my receiver is up here in the front. And of course the camera is up here with its fancy 3D printed hot glue <laughs> camera mount now this camera this camera is not very good i'm still waiting for some new cameras to come in when this one looks at the horizon it gets a lot of white and everything looks kind of uh, flushed out and it's hard to see but you know you get what you get when you only pay six dollars or whatever it was for this camera this is a Bonka 850 4s 35c battery this one does excellent on this uh Deformation 130. The only problem, it's not even really a problem, is that the battery is huge. And it, but it's not too heavy for the frame or for the propellers or for anything. It just looks big. And when you put it on here, it's it, like I said, it looks enormous. And uh, it's pretty much the size of the quadcopter itself, which is kind of sad in that respect. But uh, I usually put this on facing like this. Then I bend the wires around the back like this, and then the wires are held uh, out of the out of the way of the motors by the Velcro strap up here on the top, like this. And then this is, I take this wire and I twist it around quite a bit until I uh, until I get it to you know mount up here. And then when I plug it in, it doesn't. Uh, it stays completely out of the way of the props. Well, I didn't twist it enough here, but I would twist it enough so it stays out of the way of the props because you don't want the props chopping up your power wire when you're flying because then you crash. <laughs> but it, that's how kind of how it looks. The uh, antenna, I recommend a long antenna like this so it gets up over top the battery. I have some little short stubbies, but when they're back here, they, they have a terrible time penetrating through the battery and I get terrible signal loss and it gets real staticky when I use the little short stubbies when the battery's up on top. If you run the battery on the bottom, then it would, this little stubby antenna would be a lot better. But I don't like necessarily having the batteries on the bottom so much anymore just because you kind of get that pendulum effect when you go through corners. This one kind of has the weight up on top so it just flies a little different. I, I could probably get used to it being on bottom, but I just like it up on top because all my other ones have it up on top. The ZMR and the LS210, the VDQ210, they all run the battery up on the top. So I wanted this one to be on the top too. For the antenna mounts, I basically just used zip ties and I zip tied them up around the top of the frame here. And then I ran the antenna wire right next to them and just put a piece of electrical tape up here, another one down here, and the same thing on the other side. Before I go tear apart this quadcopter, I'll go ahead and get the uh, weight on this. This is just a quadcopter by itself, weighs in at 167. And if I throw on the 854S battery on top of there, then it starts weighing in around 260 grams. Now it can fly also with a uh, three cell, and this is a three cell 1000. So it's a little bit bigger than an 850, but it's only three cells and it weighs in, whoops, with this, weighs about 262. So it actually weighs a little more and you have less power, but you're pretty much guaranteed you're not gonna burn up your motors like a four cell will. But uh, the most important thing with your deciding between four cell and three cell is how hot are your motors getting. If your motors are to the point where you can put your hands on here and hold these and they're not burning your hands, they're not too hot, they're, they'll be okay. Warm is okay, burn your hands hot 
is too hot. Don't, don't run them like that for too long or you will be replacing them soon. On the 130, these front posts are a certain distance apart. Well, I wanted to run my receiver up here and with the receiver in there, it was just a little bit too wide to fit between the posts. So what I ended up doing was I have a screw on this side, but I didn't have a screw on this side and that allowed the front post to expand out a little bit to allow the receiver to fit in there. Now, I do lose the support of, you know, one one screw on this side, but with the frame being as small as it, as it is, I figured losing one, taking one screw out wouldn't hurt anything. I still have the post in there, it's just not attached at the top. Here it is with all the screws removed, and I'll go ahead and pull this off, and it should reveals the CC3D inside. Now, this CC3D came with pins on it pointing to the outside, so... I unsoldered all the original pins and put new pins in pointing to the inside to keep it all compact and you know hopefully to the inside instead of having stuff stick out to the outside. The uh, CC3D is held in with a long nylon screw. The nylon screw starts on the bottom and goes all the way up to the top. So it goes up and there's a single nut right there that separates the power distribution board from the main plate. Then I got a little bit longer spacer that goes in there, followed by the CC3D with a single nut up here on the top as well. Up here on the top, I have the D4R receiver. And at first I thought liquid tape would be enough to protect it from touching the components inside. And I finally gave up on that idea and just wrapped it in heat shrink and and uh, heat shrinked it. And I took off the cardboard cover and what I did is I actually unsoldered all the pins off of there too and I soldered the pins three and four together so that it was outputting the uh, CPPM. And then I soldered these wires directly to the D4R2 because like I said this is a 130 build so it's all about saving space inside here. And this uh, board with the heat shrink on it is just barely wide enough to or barely narrow enough to fit between these two posts. And these are the two posts I was talking about earlier that I had to actually push this one over a little bit to make this thing fit. At, you know, it doesn't stay over. You just kind of push it over and shove it in. But then this side has a screw in it, but this one doesn't have the screw because it's too wide for the top plate. But the other four screws all fit fine, so it does okay. And I have it held in with a zip tie that kind of goes around the whole uh, top plate up there. Back here on the back I have, this is an ET200 um, video transmitter. And I put it like this so the little push button right here to change the channel and the, uh, the settings would be uh, accessible from the outside. And the top of it is held in place with some double-sided stick tape there. And you can tell here it is touching the, um, the, power, the top plate a little bit right there. And with carbon fi fiber being conductive, you don't want anything else touching the carbon fiber plates. And uh, a lot of people have questions about if the antenna should touch it. The answer is it shouldn't touch it, but if it does, just don't let anything else touch it. So this is my Tyrannus, and I have it here selected on the Deformation 130 settings. If I come in here to the um, some of the things I was going to show you, here I am on the Inputs page, and this is for my um, my Expos. On my router, I have a uh, 20... 20 yaw and on the elevator and ailerons I got them up to 50 and that's just so that it's a little less twitchy in the middle of the sticks. Over here on the logical switches part I have these different settings set up for that are supposed to help try to figure out if I'm running a 3S or a 4S battery and then set the alarms based on you know those different different parts. In fact up here this is actually set up for a 2S battery because I was trying to play with it a little bit and these settings here are for a 3S battery and then down here on the bottom this is my 4S battery settings and what I did here is I said the uh, if the battery is less than 16.82, but it's actually greater than 12.6, then it's probably going to be a 4S. And so this number 19 says if 17 and 18 are true, it's probably a 4S battery. So then I said the low voltage on here, I want to go off at 14.11, uh, and I want the critical to go off at 13.25. 13.25 is probably a little low, but that's what I wanted. So that's what it's at. And... So we come down here, and so it's set number 22 and 23 say if it's a 4S and a low voltage, then 22 is true. 23 says if it's if it's a 4S battery and it's critical, then 23 is true. 
I have 22 and 23 set up to play the two different alarms. 22 set up to play the battery low alarm and 23 set up to play battery critical. And I got the battery low set up to repeat every 10 seconds and the critical to repeat every three seconds. Three seconds is kind of annoying, but I want it to be annoying so that I will just land and have it over with so that my that way my battery doesn't fry itself. And these other settings up here, whoops, the other settings up above are for the two cell and the three cell settings. So, but that, if you saw it on my other screen here, you can, you can see what I have here. These are the, the high and low settings uh, somewhere in here for my uh, two cell and three cell. But anyway, we're just talking about the four cell. There's my, there's my um, three cell settings if you're interested in seeing those. And these are my four cell settings again. But I have those set up so that way the low voltage alarm will go off on the Tyrannus and I'll know that I, it's, you know, it's time to land. For the FreeSky battery voltage sensor, I got the tele on the telemetry page, I have the A2 channel range set to 20 volts. Anyway, I got these numbers in here. I don't think they do anything because I mostly just care about the previous screen showing the critical and the low voltage for them for it. So I have the USB cable connected into the computer and this Deformation 130, I forgot, I installed uh, Betaflight on it, which I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised. Anyway, you can see here that Betaflight runs just fine on the CC3D. I'm gonna put that down over there so we can look at this. Uh, on here, there's not a lot of magic that I did to make this work, but I'll go ahead and show you on the configuration page. I do have one shot enabled and I did not disable the motor stop or enable the motor stop to make the motors not spin when you arm. When you try to talk, when you try to explain what this means, it's confusing. Anyway, I don't have it turned on. I got both of those turned on. And here are my, my minimum throttle settings. They're all, they're all just the standards. I think they're the standard ones, but that's how I have them set. Since I'm using the D4R receiver, I have the RX PPM selected over here. And uh, the fail safe is just set to a thousand, which I think basically means fall out of the air. And that's all I really have set on this page. Um, for my uh, tuning here, I'm using uh, Lux Float. And I mean, I'll get these a little closer so you can see them a little better. These are the PIDs that I'm using on this quadcopter with the motors and the ESCs I have. Now these probably won't be exactly the ones that you need, but if you start with these, you're gonna get pretty good results. And you can tune off of there uh, you know, till you, till you feel crazy or whatever. Now I got these, uh, roll rates and a pitch rate set up at 0.9. That's pretty sensitive, but that's why I have a lot of expo in my, um, Tyrannus. And also I have some in here too. I'll show you. And then my yaw rate is set up at 0.6 because I want it to be pretty sensitive when I'm flying around. This is the receiver tab and I don't have my, my, uh, quad or my Tyrannus turned on right now. So, oh yeah, I do. Yeah. So good. So all my settings are all right near 1500 in the middle and they all go from 1000 at the bottom to about 199 or 2000 up near the top. Over here on the right hand side you can see this is my expo setting here and I got the expo set up at 0.7. So I got 0.7 on the flight controller plus I got more in my Tyrannus. And also my RC yaw expo, I got it set up at 0.2. And I think at the, the yaw and the Tyrannus is like 0.5. So I do have a lot of yaw or a lot of expo set up because I got the sticks so sensitive. But the advantage of having the sticks sensitive is that you can do real quick rolls and real quick flips when you push it to the extremes. Over here on the uh, throttle midpoint, I got just 0.5 in the throttle expo. I don't put any, I don't put any expo on the throttle because I don't know, I don't like it. Maybe someone else would, but I don't like it. I don't have any flight modes set up on the modes tab or the modes part here just because the only thing I ever fly in anymore is acro. I don't even have the auto level set up on the quadcopter to even turn on if I wanted to. If people want to fly it, they have to learn to fly it in acro because that's all I have. That's pretty much all the tuning things that I did on this. If you, like I said earlier, if you just start with, with these settings as a baseline, you're gonna be pretty close. You'll have to do a little tuning in addition to what I showed you probably on yours because it'll be a little bit more unique. And uh, But at least it gives you a starting point to start from. So here's the deformation and my Blade 150 sitting next to each other. The front to back distance is about the same between these two, but the side to side comparison is a little bit um, wider on the Blade 150, which is kind of what you'd expect because it, it is a 150, not a 130. The difficulty on putting these together, they're probably about the same because you're gonna be cutting wires short. If you're not, if you're not 
um, comfortable with cutting your wires short and re-soldering onto the ESCs, you should probably stick with something more like a like a 180 build because they got a lot more space and uh, they're gonna be a little bit easier to fit everything inside and all your wiring is gonna be a little bit easier. If you want uh, to run five inch propellers, you're probably gonna have to move up to something like a 210 or you know 200 plus just because usually 180 frames can't run five inch propellers. Speaking of five inch propellers, here's the LS210 sitting next to the Deformation 130. The deformation looks like a little ant compared to this <laughs> giant LS210. And it's funny because back in the day, 210 would have been extremely small and a two and a 350 or 450 would have been the normal size. I'll show you some flight footage that's recorded from my Fat Shark HD2s. You can, you could probably try to figure out some way to put a camera on here, like a Mobius or uh, run cam, but the only problem you're going to run into is the lack of space. You could mount it on the bottom, but then you're going to be, you know, you're going to land on it. That's probably not the best idea. You can put it up on top of the battery, you know, once the battery's mounted, but uh, it's just hard to figure out where you're going to mount a camera on here. And so the easier thing to do is just record it with your goggles and <laughs> call it good. So here, I'll go ahead and fly this. It's snowing out here. It's the middle of winter and it's freezing, but I want to get this thing flown and uh, show you what it looks like. So like I said before, I'm gonna twist this wire up and I give it a lot of twists so it stays up out of the propellers like this. It should be fine. So I'll go ahead and put this down. We'll get a little bit of line of sight footage on this and hopefully it works out okay. And as soon as I arm it, the propellers spin up. Just because that's the way that the uh, beta flight works. Like I said, this thing has plenty of get up and go for a little 130 size like this. And it's it's pretty stable enough you can I could catch it out of the air if I wanted to. But I'm not gonna do that right now. But it flies real well. The setting it, it turns back and forth and yaws like this pretty well. You can hear those little motors going. And it's, like I said, it's run on a four cell battery right now and it does excellent. And I don't have any auto level turned on just because after a while of auto level, you kind of get tired of it and then you'll, you get just better and better at acro and eventually you don't even like auto level anymore. Anyway, let me get this, uh, get my goggles on and we'll do some a little, a little bit of FPV footage with it.
Formation 130. I had been taking these uh, 40, 45 props and cutting them down, but now that Diatone has released their 30, 45 props, these have way more meat on them and they're already cut to the right length, so you don't have to cut these down any more than you, you don't have to cut them down at all because they just fit, which is really nice. And with all the extra meat, they get a lot more thrust, and it was a big change when I started flying with these. And that's even the same propellers I have on my Blade 150 here. Anyway, this is the Deformation 130. If you have any questions about this, leave in the comments. I'll try to help you out. If you're thinking about plant, or if you're planning on building one of these, the main thing you need to remember is the difficulty is a little bit higher on these because you're going to be cutting every wire shorter because you don't want to have those wires wrapped up around the side because there's not a lot of room and you're going to have to be soldering small points like on your ESCs but it's not impossible if you think you're decent at soldering I believe you go ahead and give it a try I, I don't I'm not going to show you the links to this camera because it's terrible but I will find some links to the camera that I plan on using that's actually on its way over on the slow boat from China Anyway, if you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.